you, as your child is born in 2013, they've been sending out these emails saying that Friday is the deadline mm -hmm. to register Ellen. for kindergarten. Now, what it is, is if you register by Friday, you will know by March what school your child in that way, okay, I can breathe now. You don't have to rush. If you do it after Friday, you're still going to get a placement. You're just gonna get it later in the year, okay? So I don't want you to panic, but I want you to make an informed decision. We are a New York City public school. We are not a charter school. We have a lot of different programs going on in the building. We have six full day pre-kindergarten classes. We have six full day kindergarten classes, so on and so forth. We have a gifted and talented program. We have citywide gifted. We also have an in-house gifted program. We also have what they call an ENL concentrated uh, class on each grade. Those are for children coming into the country that need help with English. They're put together in the same class of grade. So this way they can get the extra support that they need. Um, we also have special education classes. We have integrated team teaching, ICT classes, which is a general ed teacher, a special ed teacher, and an assistant in the room, depending upon the needs of your children. Um, we try to meet the needs of every child, regardless of what they need. Uh, we have a, an extensive arts program. We have an indoor, um, brand new built indoor playground. We have a beautiful dance studio. Once you're in our school, we do have a lot to offer you guys as well. So we do the basic reading, writing, math every single day, but then we also have science five days a week. So from the time your kid is five years old in kindergarten, they'll have the chance to explore in our one of our different science labs. Um, by the end of their kindergarten year, they'll do over 100 hands-on experiments. So that's really exciting for any kids who do like that science or engineering type of program. Outside of that, we do offer some specials. So we have, um, in kindergarten, we have blocks, choice time, chess, sports, art, and music. Um, typically towards uh, the end of the year, our music teacher, along with some of our current scholars, will write their own musical theater production. You have to look, is early morning and late a, a big thing? Is that important to me? Um, is um, the schedule. Charter schools and public schools d have different schedules. Keep that in mind. And calendar. And calendar. calendar. That's what I meant. As far as days calendar. closed and stuff, the calendars are totally different. Our school runs every day. We do not have a short day on Friday. There's not an early dismissal. Um, there's not staff development days. A lot of the charter schools do that. <coughs> the children don't come. Just the staff does. You know, it's very rare. I think we have one in June. That's about it. We, you know, basically, we're open the city schools most of the time. So I can't speak for all charter schools. I know there's different ones here. With Success Academy, we have Monday, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 7:45 a.m. start, 3:45 p.m. end. Every Wednesday is a half day. The kids get out at 12:30. The teachers are trained every single Wednesday. Um, with best practices and then that's also a day where we have many of our after school programs so they're out of class at 12:30, but most kids stay for one of their different after school programs and then we get pretty much all the major holidays but our breaks are different so we have like the whole week of Thanksgiving for example our scholars are out of school and then our spring break is different we also start in the beginning of August and we end in June. So that's also something to keep in mind if you are planning like vacations over the summer. We do start a little earlier than many of the district schools. My parents, that's one of the things if you're choosing a charter school, that's a question you have to ask. What is the after school program? When does it go? What does it involve? Is it a, you know, is it a specialty? Is it a science? But is it science all four days? You know, those are the types of things to keep in mind. They can give you about theirs 
but when you go to the school, you've got to kind of make like a list, like a, a, a almost a like a spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. Check, you know, this is what I'm looking at this school. This is what this school has to offer. Just so when you go to make it, like I said, I want you to make an informed decision. I don't want, you don't want to be surprised. They're like, well, I didn't know that. Think about when you came here. I told you when we started, when we ended. Here's a calendar for the year. Uh, how many people are going to be in the class and things like that. So going forward, the same thing. No one's going to ask those questions except you. You know what you need. And all you have to do is tell the person that you go, this is what I need. Can you provide it and how is it provided? So our class sizes are typically anywhere between 25 and 30. For our Benson and Bergen schools, they are on that 30 side. Um, and then for kindergarten, we have two teachers in every single classroom. So the student to teacher ratio is like one to 15. In our older grades, if we don't already have two teachers in that classroom, then we'll have a floating teacher. And we have about three sections per grade. So that one teacher would only be floating between three different classes. So for the most part, you're going to see two teachers in the classroom. Our class size, I think, is a little bit smaller. Um, we're in the low 20s in kindergarten. Our pre-K is no more than 18 per class. Um, in the upper grades, they're in the mid-20s. Um, nobody's above 30, I don't believe. And uh, in fifth grade, they actually departmentalize. So you will have, um, the fifth graders have one teacher for reading, one, you know, reading, writing, ELA actually, mm -hmm. one teacher for mathematics, a teacher that teaches social, teacher that teaches science. So we get them ready for middle school in grade five. Success Academy is a free public charter school, so the only requirement that we have for you to apply is that you are a New York State resident. Uh, once you apply, our application deadline is April 1st, so everyone has a fair chance to submit an on-time application. Until that April 1 deadline, then you're all filtered through our random lottery process, but within that process, there are some preferences. So we have a sibling preference to help keep our families together in one school, and then we also have an in-district preference. So for the Bergen Beach School, if any of you are District 22, Community School District 22 residents, you would receive a preference to that school. Priority is given to students that are zoned to us. And in the Canarsie section, there's about six elementary schools, depending upon what block you live on, someone did the zoning. So we give priority to zoned students. And then it's zoned students with, first of all, it's zoned students with siblings. Yeah. Then it's just zoned students. Then after that, you might not be zoned to us, but you have a sibling and you have another child in the building. That's our next priority. And it goes down like that. Certain schools that you hear are not that great in New York City, well, those are the schools that basically have charter schools in with them. Why? Because they don't have enough students. So it depends upon the school. My school has 1,100 students. We can't fit another person with the door, no less a charter school. So obviously our school is doing well. The parents are keeping their children there and not sending them to charter schools. So it really all depends upon the school. Some New York City public schools are wonderful. Some might not be so good. So it's really up to the parent to investigate, see what their priorities are, what the schools have to offer, and, and make a decision. Now, in New York City, everybody basically, or almost everybody, has his own school, which means if you register your child in a charter school, and in two weeks from now you're not happy, you have the right to bring your child to their own school. Yeah. And that goes on all the time. So I need to, need to tell you, we have, a, and we've seen it a lot in the past, parents leave in the beginning of the year, they take their child to a charter school, and two months later they're back because they're not happy, but they're able to come back because we're a zone school. So, but charter schools that doesn't work like that, they have a lottery process. So it really depends upon what you, the needs are and what you want for your child. You know, what kind of education, what kind of school, what, right. you know, what the school has to offer. But I'm sorry. always a child can go to their own school, always. One of the things I always point out to parents, um, if you remember a few, a few months ago, you got those kindergarten books, okay, that list all the schools, and I think they put grades in them. Yeah. Okay, let's remember that's just a grade. Just like yes. when you take a test, 
you had a bad day and you got a bad grade doesn't mean you're a bad student. Right. Okay? So take those books as let me find out about the school, the population yeah. and everything. Right. Let me go to the school right. and get that feeling when I walk in there. So, Don't let something written in a book make a decision for you because you could be making the wrong decision and you hear from other people that say, oh my God, don't listen to that. They're wonderful. They're right. fantastic. So you have so to understand, important. A, a zone school and a public school, if, if this lady has three fourths of children that she just got and, and she lives on our block, she has the right to send those children to our school. So because we are a New York City public school and we're a zone school, we don't have the right to turn anybody away. Right. So we do have students from you know all yeah, walks every, of every. life. And and there's, there's children out there, let's be honest, it's New York City, um, that have problems and they're not gonna score in the 95s. They weren't screened to, to be in our school. Right. Um, there wasn't by a lottery that we chose the best family. Mm -hmm. So you cannot go by those letter grades and things like that. You really need to see the school, see the program, and see what the school has to offer and make a judgment that yeah, way. Yeah, ask lots of questions. You know, yes. things that are important to you, Thank you. you definitely do. Other so, questions? Go ahead. Can I just say one thing? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Uh, so I would say I agree with that. There is no one school for every child. Um, if there was, then we wouldn't have all the different options that you guys have in New York City, and I think it's great that you have the option to choose the school for your child. Many other places don't have that, so I would definitely recommend coming to tours, whether that's a tour of my school or a tour of her school or a different school I in your totally neighborhood. I totally agree with that. You need to go into the schools and see the kids in the classroom working yeah. with the other kids in the classrooms and meet the staff and meet the teachers and see, okay, do I think that my child would fit in here based on what I'm seeing? Can I picture my child in this school? in this art room or reading a book in this class. You, that is absolutely the most helpful thing. I've been doing this for a few years and every parent that I've talked to said it was really the tour that sold me on the school because I knew that I could see my child in that school. So I would definitely recommend doing that. All of our specials also have after school programs um, and clubs from second through fourth grade. Kindergarten and first grade would be invited if seats are available. If not, we have separate programs for them. Outside of that, we also do project-based learning units and field trips. So the kids do get to go outside of the school on different field trips twice a month, and that's really exciting for them as well. Because of those field trips and some other opportunities in the school, we have a really strong, tight-knit community at both Bergen Beach and Bensonhurst. The parent involvement is really strong. We love for you guys to come on field trips, volunteer in the classrooms. They help decorate our bulletin boards throughout the school. Um, we do, we also at specifically Bergen Beach and Bensonhurst, we have a really strong emphasis on culture and diversity. So we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, we celebrate Black History Month, we have a multicultural potluck every year, and outside of that, they do some other things within each classroom and each grade to celebrate that, um, and that's a big um, seller for our parents as well. They really love the different diversity that their kids are getting through their school. Okay, uh, arts is a big thing. We have a musical theater, we have a full-time licensed dance teacher, licensed music teacher, um, all the children this year, we put chess in the building. Every classroom has a smart board. Every room is furnished with laptops, iPads, and computers. Um, what am I forgetting? Our debate team. Uh, we have a debate team. Oh, we have a track team. Yeah, Our track track. team goes out to the neighborhood and, and, and competes. They, we they do really good. Class. We actually came in second place last in year. In the whole city. In, uh, in one of the city <laughs> meets. Once your child is enrolled in our school, you have the right to stay in our school if you move out of zone. However, not out of state. Same, same for us. Okay. okay. As long as you live within New York City, you're, you know, if you move to the Bronx and you want to 
still keep her here. Still yeah, keep the like child in my here. school, that's fine. But once you move out of the city, mm -hmm. um, then no, you have to go to whatever the, the state or... Yeah, or, like or if you go to Long Island, you're, you have, you're zoned right. for like, wherever you live. <laughs> There's no, no applying. No okay, so how it works like this, we're asking everybody to apply now. The city's having everybody who applied for, for pre-K and then kindergarten, and they're going to offer you seats based on priority. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sibling prior preferences and all. Come the first week of September when school opens up, actually the last week of August, because we open up a week before for registration. Even if you did not apply, if you're zoned to my school, all you have to do is walk in with your child and proof of your address and you get a seat. Mm -hmm. And what you can do, if you, if you move to Bronx, like you said, and you were in um, 115. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is um, go to enrollment office and, and prove hardship of transportation. So if it's more than 60, I think it's 60, 90 minutes away from your home, mm -hmm. you can, can transfer.